Got a special treat for you today as I am green with envy as we take a look at the Mackie EM99B in a greeny box. And what is inside the box? Desktop stand, foam windscreen, XLR cable. What? Let's check it out in today's episode of Level Up. Let's do this. All right, the Mackie EM99B Cardioid Dynamic Broadcast Microphone. Let's go and open the box and see. Open, open the... Uh, let's, let's open the box. Let's just see what's inside. I, I can't speak. Man, I'm really excited about Mackie. And one of the reasons I'm excited about this Mackie is uh, the church that I'm a pastor at, uh, an assistant pastor at, I started out as a sound guy. And the board that we used for mixing sound when I first started, and I had no audio skills whatsoever, just wanted to serve, wanted to be plugged in at the church to do something, and really just to kind of hide in the back. That's what we all do. Any sound guy out there goes to church, you know that's why you went to the booth, because you're in the back and no one can see you. So that's what I did. I wanted to hide uh, when my wife made me start going. Oh, uh, we had a Mackie board, and that's what I learned sound on, just loved it. And that's how I kind of cut my teeth in sound and got me interested was a Mackie board. So I'm just a big fan of Mackie just because of how easy it was for me to learn the system, the software, and everything they had on it. Mackie did provide this microphone for this video review. Ethics statement still applies. Just because I receive a microphone does not guarantee a video is going to be made. The video is going to be my opinion and my opinion alone, good or bad. We're going to do it. We're going to take it out and we're going to test it out. Oh my God. This is heavy. There's some heft to this thing. And I'm going to be quick because I know you guys want to hear it. You not so much want to see it. We've got the XLR input on the back. Cardioid polar pattern you see right there. And the reason they say cardioid is because it's shaped like a heart. But there you go. Absolute solid metal heavy. I do not want to drop this on my foot or the floor. Pop filter is already on it in the box. And it is a super thin pop filter, by the way, if you're looking at it right now. Very thin, razor thin. So I'm curious to see what it is. This is one of those mics that I will say just looking at it that most of them you like the way it looks without the pop filter on and you kind of live with it on there because it does perform better with plosives. This microphone, I'm just going to say, I kind of like it better with the pop filter on than off. Just kind of looking at it right here, you take the pop filter off and it's just kind of got this big caboose. It's got a big booty on it. Kind of like what I have after 45 years old. Big, big caboose on the back. And uh, just kind of thinner up front. So the body style, you know, I just, I like how that pop filter just kind of smooths it out from front to back. What else comes in the box? It comes with a green XLR cable. I like green. I like colors. Green's very nice. I'm a Michigan State fan by nature. So go Sparty. Next we've got plastic. And when we pull this layer off, we've got our stand behind it. Little Mackie logo right there. And it has got the largest mic. <laughs> Man, their theme is go big or go home. This microphone stand is a beast. That is just crazy. Like all my other microphone stands are like half this size. And it is heavy, heavy. And I guess it has to be because this microphone is heavy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this mic stand together, plug it in, and we're going to see what it sounds like. Your face, right now you're listening to, to me on the Mayano PD200X through my PodTrack P8, but we're going to switch over to the Scarlett Vocaster 1, and I'm going to plug this in there, and then we'll give it a test run, and then we'll throw some other microphones up against it for a comparison just to see how it performs against some of my other favorite microphones. You know, I'll be right back. For you, it's going to be a second, but for me, it's going to be like days weeks, months, years. So as you can see over here, yeah, as you can see, I still don't know which hand to use. This is the Vocaster hub over here. And as you can see, processing is turned off. This is what it sounds like out of the box. I am about four to six inches away from the microphone where I traditionally like to have it. I'm not one that likes to be right up on the microphone as I'm talking because I'm handsy and I don't want to whack and slap the microphone. I'm so sorry that you had to just listen to that. But I want to keep my sound clean, so I give myself a little bit of space between me and the microphone. So I like to be about four to six inches away. That's my comfort zone. So I like microphones that are really good at picking up my audio from a little bit of a gap. No enhancements, no changes, straight out of the box. I'm going to say this. This is a deceptive microphone, the Mackie EM99B. And the reason I'm going to say that is because just looking at it, it looks hefty, 
broadcast dynamic, you're thinking, man, can this really go after the Shure SM7B with that deep, dark, broadcasty sound? A lot of the microphones lately I think that have been coming out have now kind of shifted from trying to mimic or replace the Shure SM7B with that darker, richer SM7B sound. And I think they're kind of going after the people that really like the RE20 and the brightness. Just looking at this microphone, you would think, okay, this is going after the Shure SM7B. It's big, it's chunky, it's heavy. It just has that, I want to, you know, give those SM7B people a what for and say, hey, I'm here too. And it's not going after the Shure SM7B. I just hear a very intentional and powerful presence in that high end. I hear a lot of detail in the higher end of my voice, whereas some of the other microphones I've done in the past, where when you relax and get low, it picks up the details and the raspiness of your low end. I think this picks up the detail in your voice and that high mid range and the high end. This is the first microphone I feel like I like it better without the enhancements turned on. Whenever I do any kind of processing, I feel like it just, everything it tries to do to help your lows and your low mid, it's still bumping that high end up with it just a little bit, but because the high is already as far as I would like it, and I do like it here, but there's no wiggle room as far as how much higher I can take it. I feel like this is the ceiling, and anytime I turn processing on, it pushes the high end through the ceiling. Okay, future mic here. As I'm listening to this review, I listening back to it, it sounds so much better than it did in the moment, and here's why, because I'm an idiot. All right, so hear me out. I'm just gonna hold this up for a second. If you're just looking at the frequency response chart, you could see right here, looking at it, that this thing really does work and have fun in your highs and your high mids. And then it kind of evens out in your low mids, and then it grabs a little bit of low end before it drops off. Just, just like a quick grab of it. So again, it's working really hard to focus on your highs. And switching to a microphone as bright as this one, I did not think for the life of me to turn down my headphone monitor so it wasn't so piercing in my ear. When I turn my headphone monitor down to about 45 to 50% on the Vocaster Hub, I love the enhancements. I love even the bright. I don't know. So again, if you have your headphone monitor cranked up, it's going to be overwhelming in your headphones. And it was, but it wasn't because the microphone is too high. It was because I just, I didn't turn my headphone monitor down to make the adjustment on my ears as it was more focused on the higher frequencies. Simple fix. Turn your headphone net monitor down and not a whole lot, just enough. Didn't occur to me. And that's why it was so overbearing on my ears. When I go back and listen to it with the monitor turned at like 50% to 45% on my vocaster, I like it. I really like it. All I'm saying. So future mic here, just throwing that in here. I'm listening to it as I'm talking with my headphone monitor adjusted now because I'm thinking today and I'm like, what are you talking about? It sounds great, you idiot. So there you go. Future mic, chiming in. Back to the video. Now, before we get started with the mic comparison, I just want to say this because I've been doing this video recording or video review over the last couple of days, and I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but I just love the microphone stand that this package comes with at 149. Not only do you get a great bright sounding microphone that tries to live there with the RE20, but they give you a pop filter XLR cable, which we've mentioned before, but this microphone stand is out of this world amazing because this right here is the shortest setting it comes with. And the shortest setting puts it right where it's supposed to be. Proper mic placement. I love it. It's bam, home run. Some of these other microphones that I get for reviews, they come with these desk stands that are like down here. And I got to like go way down here. And that's just terrible audio. But I got to go way down here and hunch down if I want this quality audio with a microphone stand. This is crazy. I don't want to lean down like this to get great audio without a boom arm. I want to be able to have options where I can use a boom arm. This microphone stand that I get with the microphone will do the job. And if you're five foot nine like me, bam, right out of the box in its lowest setting. If you're shorter than that, like my wife at four foot eight, all right, you're just sitting down here. She's going to kill me if she sees this, but she would be short like this and she could just tilt the microphone down and still have great mic placement with it this high. And if you're Shaquille O'Neal, Dude, this is 17 inches from the base to the center of the microphone when it's completely level. 17 inches. So this microphone stand has you covered for like the most extreme cases and 
for the everyday five foot nine average person because I'm just average. I'm an average person. I ain't afraid to admit it. So let's go ahead and get on with the microphone comparison. I'm going to test it against other microphones that are $100 and up because I think once you get below $100, it's a whole different set of microphones and a whole different set of characteristics. But if you're going for this, you're in that $100 and up, which is kind of like that next level commitment to your microphone, that first real financial intentional investment in your microphone, you're going over $100. So we're going to test it with some microphones that are similar price point, but at least over $100. So let's get to it with our microphone review. Starting with the Mackie EM99B, $149 with an XLR cable desk stand, and it is a bright microphone. No enhancements, no processing. I have it on my Vocaster 1. My gain is set at about 60%, and this is what it sounds like out of the box in its default settings. Now on to the next microphone. This is the Miano PD400X. This originally came out at $150. You can get it on sale on Amazon from time to time for $119. Also comes with a desktop stand, which is a lot shorter than the one you see here. I kind of put an extension on it. But $150, pop filter stand and XLR cable. Similar price point. Let me know what you think. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers and he puts pineapple on his pizza. Okay, now I'm back on the Mackie EM99B. I took the pop filter off because when I did the Mayano PD400X, I didn't have a pop filter on it. So you got them back to back. You can hear what they sound like dragging the bar back and forth. But this is what it sounds like. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. I had the gain on the Mayano PD400X set at 70%. So I had to boost it a little bit in order to get it to where the Mackie EM99 was. So I'd say about a 10% boost in gain with the Mayano PD400X without the pop filter. EM99 with the pop filter. On to the next microphone. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. I've had to adjust my gain again to about 70%, so 10% higher than the Mackie EM99B. This is a $129 microphone. Originally came out at $200, down to $129. Occasionally can find it for $99 on Amazon. There's two switches on the back. I've activated both of them, which give it its brightest settings possible. The Samson Q9U. This is without the pop filter on it. And this is what it sounds like with the pop filter on it. Peter Piper, pack to pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. Now I'm back on the Mackie EM99B for our palate cleanser. I, I cannot talk today. This is $149. Bright microphone, stand, XLR cable, pop filter. This is what it sounds like. This is the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. This is a condenser microphone, and I threw this in here because the Mackie EM99 acts like a condenser microphone with its strength and the brightness and the high mids. Very clear and articulate, kind of like the RE20. Usually you got to go condenser route if you want a cheaper version of the RE20 that's affordable. This is also $149 retail for just the mic. If you want the shock, the shock mount and the pop filter, it's about another $70. Bucks. So you're looking at $230, everything all together. But the mic itself, condenser, 48 volt phantom power. I've got my mic, the gain adjusted to about, I would say, 40% on my Vocaster hub right now. And this is what it sounds like. Peter Piper, pack to pack. Of pickled peppers, he puts pineapple on his pizza. Back on the Mackie EM99B, $149 stand, XLR cable, and pop filter. Almost forgot. Now we're on the Mayano PM500. This is also a condenser microphone, 48 volt phantom power plugged into the Vocaster hub. The gain level in order to have it the same distance as I like to have it with the Mackie EM99B or any microphone is exactly 50% on the Vocaster hub with 48 volt phantom power. This is what it sounds like. Peter Piper, packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. Condenser, 149. Also comes with pop filter, shock mount, and a stand and XLR cable. Now we're back on the Mackie EM99B as I put the Mayano PM500 back. It's a little sloppy up here. I got to clean up this desk. Sorry about this. It's kind of distracting, isn't it? The Mackie EM99B. Peter Piper, packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. This is the Shure SM7. No, it's not. This is the Shure MV7. This is an XLR USB microphone. This retails for $249. If you want to get the XLR version, I think you can get it for $179. So I just wanted to test this in the XLR version in case you like the sound of the MV7 in XLR. That's a lot of XLRs. I'm going to move on. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. He puts pineapple on his pizza. And I have this set at 70% gain on the Vocaster hub. So again, about a 10% boost. This is what it sounds like with the pop filter on because it sounds absolutely horrible without the pop filter. And the pop filter that's on here is the Shure SM7B replacement pop filter because the one that comes with it stinks. Just saying. 
This is the Shure SM57. This is a $99 microphone, but when you get the pop filter, the AWS2 or the ASW2, I'm not sure which one it is, but I have the link in the description down below for it. You get the pop filter and a microphone stand XLR cable. You're right at $149, what you get with this. And if we're going to stack this up against the competition, this would definitely be included as the Shure SM57 is the spoken word microphone for the White House when the president speaks at all his press conferences. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers, and he puts pineapple on his pizza. The Shure SM57. And here is the Mackie EM99B for the palate cleanser. And we're on to one last microphone because you cannot have a microphone review anymore and consider it legit unless it's got this microphone in it, the Shure SM7B, so let's get to it. In the comparison with the Mackie EM99B, I'm talking on the Shure SM7B. This is a $400 microphone. This is what you see on 90% of all the podcasts that are out there, video or audio. Everybody wants to use it. $400. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers, and he puts pineapple on his pizza. And I've got my presets on here, which is like the mid-boost and the high-pass filter to get it a little brighter because I think it's a little too muddy and a little too dark for my voice. So here you go. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers peppers and this is what it sounds like on my voice so now i have the mackie em99 plugged into my mac mini vocaster hub but i've taken the pop filter off and i want to run it through the same enhancements of the vocaster hub without the pop filter on because it does change the dynamic of your voice so let's run through it this is with the enhancements turned off now i'm going to turn it on and we're going to go to radio mode this is the em99 mackie microphone or the EM99B in radio mode. This is the Mackie EM99B in clean mode. This is the Mackie EM99B in warm mode. Tell me what you think of this sound. And this is the Mackie EM99B in bright mode, which is really trying to highlight the strengths of this microphone. The Mackie EM99B in bright mode. Now this is what it sounds like with the Toner TA20 preamp hooked up to the Vocaster hub. Processing turned off with the Samson Q9U pop filter on this thing, and it fits it perfectly. Just wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and run through the processing with the pop filter on it. And here we go, the Mackie EM99B in radio mode. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. This is the Mackie EM99B in clean mode. Peter Piper, back to pack of pickled peppers, he puts pineapple on his pizza. This is the Mackie EM99B in warm mode. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Mackie EM99B in warm mode. And this is the Mackie EM99B in bright mode. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these that you liked the best. So for me, I think my sweet spot for this microphone, my cherry setup would be the Samson Q9U pop filter on the Mackie EM99B with the vocaster hub and hooking it up to the toner ta20 preamp into my vocaster hub processing on and bright and i think for me this one changes the flavor of my voice that makes it different than the other mics which is kind of where i would want it to be if i'm going to use this microphone i want different i want to change things up every now and then it gives me a very unique sound compared to any of the other microphones in my studio and i actually like this one i think this one is the most intentional as far as going after that RE20 sound, that bright, poppy, vibrant, high-end, high-mids that the RE20 gives you. Now for my pros and cons regarding this microphone. The pros, I love the look. I love the pop filter that comes with it. In fact, you know, I need to stop because this is my Samson Q9U pop filter. If I'm doing a review, we need to like stay honest. The pros, the price, and what you get with this microphone is absolutely amazing. The microphone stand is the microphone stand you always want to have for your desk. It has adjustment. It can be low like this. You can raise it up to 17 inches high, which is like my forehead level there and tilt it up and you've got range. You can point it down if you're shorter than that. You're going to be just fine. I love what comes in this package. I like its unique sound. I like how it's more aggressive and more chasing after the high end, like it's trying to act like a condenser microphone trying to get in that space, but because it's a dynamic microphone, I feel like it's better noise projection than a condenser microphone, as it should be, just for the typical dynamic and style of and the characteristics of a dynamic versus a condenser microphone. So if you're liking that bright sound, but you have some problems with noise rejection with your condenser microphone, this is a great option to go with if you got to be running your air conditioner. Because since the mic comparison, you've been listening to me on this microphone with my air conditioner and the fan on in the room next door pointing right at this door so that door is open 
this door is open and you can hear it from about 30 feet away, but you've been listening to it. I think it's great at noise projection and getting that airy sound that your fans and air conditioners can bring into the room. So I do love that. I love how it sounds with the pop filter and without the pop filter. I think it gives it more of that mid presence without the pop filter. Sounds absolutely great. Put it on there, kind of tames it a little bit. It is a gain hungry microphone, but when you hook up a preamp to this, the clean gain added to this gives you a, a really great sound. I do like it. For $149, I would like a little less, a little less, I would like a little bit less sensitivity to handling on this thing. My other con is I just wish it had a little bit more low end. My recommendations for this microphone, I'm going to say, I think this is an absolute gem, gem for people with deeper voices. This thing sounds just like the piece de resistance for people that have that deeper voice. The way this thing accentuates and highlights and chases after the highs, and you're already bringing your natural lows, Oh my gosh, I wish I had that deeper voice. News from the booth, he's got that darker voice. He does voiceovers and this thing sounds absolutely amazing on his voice. Oh my gosh. So if you have a deeper voice, this is an absolute home run of a microphone for you. People with the higher voice, it's gonna solely depend on what kind of microphone you do like. Do you like that RE20 sound? this is gonna be for you. Do you like that RE320 sound? This is gonna be for you. If you like that Shure SM7B, that Ethos sound of the darker, the Logitech Blue Sona, if you like those kind of sounds, this is probably a little bit too much of another direction for you. So that's my thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below which one you like the best, which microphone you like the best in the mic comparison, or if you just think I'm just flat out crazy for saying the things that I say, because hey, I'm not an expert. I'm just taking this thing for test drive and giving you my thoughts on this thing. But I think, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of in line with Bandrew. I can see why a lot of people would love this as a budget option to the RE20. And I know $149 doesn't exactly sound budget. But when you think about the RE20, the price tag it comes with, and the shock mount that you need to have with that microphone to go with it, the price you're spending on that sound, you can save a whole lot of money on the Mackie EM99 for that bright, vibrant sound that the RE20 and the RE3. 20 gives you. I'm right in line with what he said. I'm in perfect agreement. And my opinion next to his don't mean two, two pennies, two cents, two biscuits at Red Lobster means nothing. So my conclusion, the Mackie EM99B for $149. Is it worth it? Absolutely. It gives you such a unique sound for a dynamic microphone. I like how unique it is and how different it is to the other microphones in my studio. It gives me a different sound that none of my other microphones give me. And that's what I want. I want flavors. I'm like Baskin Robbins. I want my, my microphones to have 31 flavors of audio. When I switch it up, I want it to bring something different to the table. And the Mackie EM99B does that. If you like it, go get yourself one. I'll have a, a link in the description down below for this microphone and all the stuff that I have in this setup and all the microphones in this video. All that will be in the description down below. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, the notification bell so you guys are notified when future content goes up because it is going up. And until I see you guys in the next one, I'm... Ooh, almost push this out of the way like I do the boom arms. This would go flying and I like my toes because this is built like a tank. So I'm just gonna tell you, I'm out. Whoosh. Yeah, <laughs> she's out too. See you in the next video.